Hi, my name is Pile Mushili and I'm a research assistant with the MedFest program. In this series, we'll be exploring different potential hazards in various workplaces. In this video, I have a tour of a university industrial hygiene laboratory to talk about some of the potential hazards. Featured in this video is a university research professor and a PhD student. Pete Rayner. I'm a professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Minnesota. I teach uh, occupational hygiene and my research expertise is in exposures to aerosol particles, airborne particles in workplaces. And most of my research is in the laboratory has involved um, generating and then doing tests with aerosols to understand their physical properties, understand how to sample them from the air better, understand how to control them and intervene in order to reduce worker exposures to these aerosols. A lot of these aerosols that we work with um, have different hazardous properties. I've worked a lot with semi-volatile aerosols that include oils and pesticide aerosols. Um, I've worked with biological aerosols, viruses, and bacteria, and as well as with nanoparticle aerosols. Uh, so there's um, a lot of hazards associated with those in the laboratory for the, the students and faculty and staff who may be conducting experiments. So one hazard that we have in this space is this gas cylinder, which is properly attached um, to the, um, the bench here, but it creates a very narrow walkway, so it makes it hard if there's an emergency to, it could be dangerous to exit by here. There's also another spot along the floor here where there's a cord going across from the electrical outlets to this chamber, and um, we, we have properly put a cover over the cord, and attached to the ground, but that is another potential hazard for tripping um, if you're walking through this space. The cylinders are properly attached to the benches. Um, you have this clamp that goes on the bench and then the straps that go around the tank. And this tank has a regulator on it in order to regulate the pressure. Um, and that regulator will keep the, the gas from leaking out. and. Uh, when you are using the tank frequently, it's okay to have the regulator on it as long as it's strapped down. This tank, which is not being used yet, um, has a cap on it that protects the valve at the top of the tank um, when it's being transferred. So if this tank wasn't strapped and it fell over some for some reason and this cap wasn't in place, then the valve could be knocked off become a projectile because of the high pressure in the tank uh, and all sorts of injuries could potentially occur. So two things in order to try to keep um, yourself safe from get it, it, when using gas cylinders are to make sure it's capped, particularly when it's being moved, and also when um, you receive a tank to strap it in so it, um, it does not fall over and, and present danger. So in our laboratory we have a number of hazardous materials that we work with uh, in our experiments looking at aerosols. Uh, we have some semi-volatile chemicals like uh, oils and pesticides and we also handle powders and then suspensions of nanomaterials. So all of these can be inhalation hazards and even dermal hazards. Uh, many of these hazardous agents we store and work with in laboratory hoods like this one. And this laboratory hood is at this point very crowded. It's overcrowded and there's really no workspace in this hood. And it should not be this way. So what we have in here, some of the, the issues, we have a gasoline can that has some, um, some gas in it. We have a number of containers with toluene. We have some needles here that um, could be in the way of working. And so this laboratory hood is too crowded to actually do the work that we need to do and so we before we would do any work in here we would need to clean this out store this um, these chemicals safely elsewhere and then create a workspace that would be safe 
and um, easy to work in. So one of the hazards that we face in our lab is handling powders and you can experience that when you're trying to weigh them out to get the correct amount for an experiment. So you know, if you're, you're doing some weighing, you're, you're transferring some material from a container into maybe a weighing boat and there's a possibility that this could lead to an exposure if this were a particularly um, lightweight material that could become airborne. So in the process of weighing, uh, we have concerns that if there's something particularly toxic or particularly small like a nanomaterial, that we may need to contain this microbalance within some sort of ventilated enclosure or even within a laboratory hood. I'm working with a test dust now that isn't particularly toxic, it's made of clay, so I don't need to worry about that too much, but in other situations you may need to be a lot more careful with your handling of powders. So because we study the properties and behavior of different kinds of aerosols in our laboratory, we have to be able to generate aerosols intentionally, and this can create hazards for us. So we have devices like this one. This is a nebulizer. We put high pressure air into the apparatus through this tube, and then an aerosol is created that comes out this opening. And we can place the nebulizer into this apparatus, and um, the aerosol flows through the apparatus. Air is moved by a vacuum pump. And we can conduct different tests using uh, different types of air samplers to try to understand how they perform, maybe even test filtration uh, media to see how effective they are. And in this apparatus, we've tested liquid aerosols, we've tested microbiolo microbiological aerosols, we've tested nanomaterials generated with something different than this apparatus, a, um, an electrospray aerosol generator but they all can potentially create hazards. And so we have secondary containment around our apparatus. We can close this all up and have it's ventilated. And so we can make sure that we're doubly protected from um, exposures to these aerosols while we're conducting experiments. Help. I'm a PhD student and research assistant here at the University of Minnesota Environmental Health Program. My work primarily down here is with the Exposure Science and Sustainability Institute. One of the tools we primarily use in ESSE is our environmental chamber. In our chamber, we can simulate and measure exposures to answer questions from industry. <laughs> there are a number of hazards that go along with using our chamber, we consider it a confined space, and that's because there is only one exit and entrance into the chamber itself. Ways that we can keep ourselves safe while working with the chamber is we always work in pairs when we're down in the lab. Um, that's so we can always let somebody know when we're entering and exiting the chamber. In so in case there was an emergency or an accident, there would be somebody close by and somebody that would be checking in on us. Our work within SE also changes quite a bit, and so our hazards within the chamber can change. And so we need to be aware if we're working with a hazardous chemical where there might be an inhalation exposure. So do we need to wear a respirator when we go into the chamber? Um, we also use quite a few instruments, and so are there a number of power cords or instruments on the floor that could pose a trip hazard while we're inside the chamber? Um, and so just relatively being aware of our surroundings and being aware of the dangers that are inside the chamber itself. Ways that we can keep other people safe that might not be working on the same project as us are um, we post signs on the door which tell people not to enter, um, and also that there's an experiment going on. <laughs> if there was an experiment actually going on, we would list our hazards that are um, inside the chamber. So what chemicals are we using? Is there a shock hazard? Is there a trip hazard? Things like that. And then in case of an emergency, so if there was a chemical spill or a fire, or somebody felt like something wasn't going right inside the chamber, they would have a contact 
number to get a hold of one of us.